Hi everyone and welcome back! Recently I moved and I'm still in the process so it is a bit difficult to observe the weekly update formula. So I'm gonna set a monthly update thing and let's see what happens. Anyway, the other day I was thinking that the most famous computers were produced in the USA. While here in Europe there is a plenty of forbidden, strange, unusual, ugly, whatever kind of computer that are mostly unknown for the rest of the world. That said, I'd like to start a new kind of series about strange European computers. Actually, I already did an episode, it is about the Alphatronic P3, if you haven't watched it, you can click on the top right now. The computer for today is this beast here, an Olivetti M20, be prepared! As said, in today's episode we are going to take a look at this computer here. This is an Olivetti M20, manufactured in 1982, and I've taken it from a friend of mine, Piero, something like 4 or 5 months ago, right after the lockdown ended in Italy. Piero is a great technician and a great collector too. Me and a friend of mine went to Piero's house, which is filled with all the hardware of any kind, as you can see. It has all sorts of Commodore goodies, even a silver label, and really he is my master Jedi for repairs on old computers. I've taken these footages only in the main collection room, but every corner of his studio's house, storage, whatever, is filled with goodies of all kind. Computing obscureness at its peak. On the bench there is a Texas Instrument TI 990, a mini computer from the 70s by Texas Instruments, which uses the same processor as the TI 99-4A. This is the disc, one part, signor. How many kilobytes have these? This has 64K, but this one was going to run 6 terminals. Ah, ok. Questo è un mini computer. Questo qui io ho la fattura d'acquisto nel 1979, costava 29.800.000 lire. I tried playing tic tac toe for a bit, but it was pretty boring to be honest. Anyhow, we exchanged items, an IBM Backlink Spring keyboard for an Olivetti M20. I have another keyboard and he has another M20, so why not? It was working at Piero's lab, we tried it, but when I took it home, it was broken. I was working on this Olivetti M20, which is a very interesting machine, and I just want to do floppy for that, but the machine stops work. If I turn on the, the switch, we get those vertical bars right here. This is an Olivetti, so it, it's rather out of standard, okay? But this problem usually means bad RAM. I went across uh, every single chip and I found something interesting. Let me show you. I have this little crappy oscilloscope, but it, it do the job. So if we go on a good RAM chip and we measure the data output, uh, you can see that it's a rock solid, it's a nice um, sine wave or what, whatever it is. And if we look at data input, we can see another rock solid uh, sine form. But if we go to what I think it is a bad RAM chip and we perform the same test on data output, we have garbage. <laughs> and on data input, we have garbage too. So this chip is probably dead. Also that one is probably dead. Yeah, that's definitely dead. I found some broken uh, RAM chips, what I think are broken RAM chips. So I'm going to, to change the RAM. Thank you. 
Okay, and now I'm going to flip the switch. Aha! It's working! <laughs> I never used that computer before. I used it for about <laughs> half an hour <laughs> and I I was able to repair it. Oh man, that was only broken broken RAM. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> oh man, I'm so I'm so glad of that because this, this is a rather interesting piece of history and Italian computer history. So, so now it is working and ready to be reviewed. You are probably familiar with the Olivetti M24, which is an MS-DOS compatible computer, but this is something different. This was the attempt of Olivetti to enter the system world pre-DOS and they came out with this strange operating system called PCOS. This obviously was a rather silly from Olivetti that later introduced an alternate process board, basically a processor card, with an Intel 8086 to run MS-DOS. By the way, despite the fact that this computer was mostly sold in, in Italy and Europe, the actual development took place into the Olivetti Center in Cupertino, California, the Olivetti Advanced Technology Center. To be honest, the machine was designed to run industrial applications, so it is more or less justified the choice of an alternative entirely proprietary operating system. But still, let's take a closer look. On the front, we have the unit itself and the monitor, leaning on this groove in the case. On the right, we have this little white modern box here, but we will take a closer look later. On the front, we have two floppy drives, one is labeled 0 and one is labeled 1. Those are two full height Shugat like motor floppy drives of 320 KB byte. On the back, there is the power switch, the power cord, the label with the name of constructor and the manufacturing information. Then we have the monitor plug, which is proprietary, and delivers power as well as data. Right after, there is a Centronic connection with a proprietary cable. And then, under this little tab here, we have an RS232 still proprietary. On the right of the machine there is the hard reset button and on the left there is nothing. Let's take a look inside where the goodies are. The heart of the machine is a Xerox Z8001 at 4 MHz. It has 128 KB of RAM, it can be maxed out to 512, and it is capable of displaying up to 8 colors with the right monitor, but mine is black and white only. On the top we can see that there are some expansion slots, all proprietary of course, and they have a card installed into one of them. If you look closely, you can spot that this card is modern and it is connected to the white box of before. Well, no more lies. This is an hard disk emulator. See, this machine came out in 1982 with two configurations, dual floppy drive or single floppy drive and a Winchester hard disk of 11 megabyte, if I recall correctly. 1982, mind-blowing, so as usual the hard disk drives are dying and they were not exactly popular back then, so Piero, the guy who gave me these, designed by itself the emulator that you are seeing here, as well as the hard disk controller into the computer that is the same but smaller than the original Olivetti controller. The emulator actually, it is a little bit more than a simple M20 hard disk emulator. It is in fact a Western Digital 1001 controller emulator, which can be connected to nearly everything from this era. I'm gonna leave the Piero's email into the description below if you'd like to buy one. On the top right sits the power supply and that's pretty much it. RS-232 and the Centronics interface are directly mounted into the motherboard. So now let's turn on this sucker.
This is the prompt of the PCOS and at the prompt it gives you a little information about the system itself so as you can see we can uh, see L1 and 20 instant configuration total memory size 128 display type black and white um, PCOS 8000 3.0e so um, the prompt is actually similar to MS-DOS and CPM, it is based for the vast majority on those two systems. But the commands are totally different. For instance, um, let's try an MS-DOS command uh, directory. Error 92. Also, you can see that the device is 10. 10 indicates the hard disk. So now we boot it into the hard disk, or rather the emulator of Piero. So in order to have a listing of the directory, we actually have to use the volume list command. All the commands for the PCOS are composed by two letters. So volume listing is view L and now we can select as in MS-DOS uh, the device on which we want to do the volume list in this case if you uh, if we don't specify nothing it will automatically list in the directory of 10 so let's try it volume listing and here we go and this is the volume uh, the hard disk volume as you can see here the, the light is flashing every time I hit the key to continue and that's it so uh, let's insert a floppy disk and so we can do volume uh, sorry oh, actually <laughs> to correct the typos there is a very strange procedure so if I do a mistake on the screen the only way I can backspace and cancel the, the, the mistake is to press this blue button and hold H and as you can see that actually is the way to cancel on this computer so volume list of drive 0 so as you can see volume 0 and that is the content of the floppy disk inserted in the zero drive which is the right drive and as you can see now the prompt is for the zero drive that's pretty much it actually the vast majority of programs for the Olivetti N20 is written in basic so in order to access basic we simply have to write basic and then it should bring us to the familiar prompt and so I have inserted the disk into the drive 0 so in order to list the directory uh, we want to write files uh, quotation mark 0 column and then quotation mark this is a game disket that I found online and uh, we can try uh, run uh, Topo Drago. Let's see what the hell is that. Yeah, I already played that. So, uh, do you want to uh, the game to be explained? No. And that you are a mouse, and this is cheese, and you have to eat it before the dragon kills you and uh, oh here we go that's a little game oh no uh, let's try another No, the cheese is moving! <laughs> That's impossible! I'm gonna be eaten! No, oh, 14 as a score! That's not bad! 
Let's take a look at SynCalc. SynCalc. Oh, that's actually neat. This is a sin cosine uh, calculations. Oh yeah, that's actually a pretty useful thing to do with this uh, computer. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's actually neat. Okay, so in this disk there are even some graphic demos, like Marilyn, for instance. So let's run Marilyn. Oh, here we go. So, uh, Welke Drucken, uh, which is uh, which stands for which printer, um, kinda is for known. So we are going to answer that. So the uh, actual image will be displayed onto the screen, and that's it. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that's a graphical demo of Marilyn. We can try micro missiles. That sounds like a game, so. Oh, error. So I don't know if uh, those uh, errors are meant that my Olive ATM20 isn't able to play that because of this monitor or the RAM quantity or such, or if that is uh, a legit problem of my machine, or again, if it is a problem of the image of the floppy disks. I don't know. Let's try the other disk. Because uh, I played the other day a game very interesting. So. It is in Italian, but it's very cool. Oh, that's it. So this is an RPG for the M20. Yeah, basically you have to search for treasures. So. So, uh, there is nothing here. Uh, direction, uh, distance, that's good, about 4. And let's calculate. I found an Hydra. I want to fight. How many points of. Uh, I don't know. 6? No! Uh, the Hydra was actually very powerful. I want to retry, yes. It is actually a, a really good made RPG. I mean, uh, compared to Ultima and such like that, uh, it's a little bit primitive, but... Oh, uh, yep, uh, I... I beat the game apparently. <laughs> so that wasn't really a game machine, so th there aren't many games for that. There are some uh, programs for, for, from Olivetti, like the Oli Tour, the Oli Diagnostic, and things like that. But mostly the users of this machine were writing their programs for that. So nobody written and sold a game for the M20, which is legit and non the things that we saw here. So yeah, that's basically it. I mean, the M20, as I said, was a business machine, an industrial business machine, so it's pretty boring. <laughs> but it is really, really fascinating how this machine came out. It was designed in Cupertino, then sold in Italy and Europe. So I found this machine really fascinating. Plus, it is Olivetti, it is like the only big computer manufacturer from Italy, so I'm fascinated by everything it's Olivetti. So the last thing I want to talk about is how to make floppy disks for this machine, because this machine is very tricky in order to make floppy disks for, for her. 
So, um, about writing floppy disk for this machine, it is possible, it's a little bit complicated, but it's not impossible. So, you need a machine with a booted operating system. And that is because uh, the geometry of the floppy disk is different from uh, the Olivetti M20 and the IBM compatibles and such. The fact is, the geometry is uh, actually qu quite similar, but the first track is different. The track 0 on the Olivetti M20 is formatted on FM encoding while on IBM compatibles and such it is formatted on uh, MFM encoding and the first track, the track 0, actually contains all the information of the system so it's, it is essential <laughs> the track 0 in order to operate uh, with a floppy disk. Now, the first, the earliest uh, IBM compatibles such as the 5150, the 5155, uh, I think the 5160, the XT, were able to write FM encoding uh, because they were using a controller like this. Uh, this is a, a Mac D765AC uh, uh, and this IC is a floppy drive controller and it is actually capable of formatting MFM and FM encoding on floppy disks. But later machines such as the uh, 286, 486, 386, Pentiums and such, uh, they, they, they are not able to write. Uh, zero track. So you need an M20 in order to format properly the first track of the disk. Then you could use the formatted disk into the M20 to an IBM compatible of your choice, uh, even a Pentium, to write on under MS-DOS the right image. Now, uh, there is another problem. The people who dumped the system floppy disk, uh, they were not conscious about the zero track formatting FM, MFM and such. So, uh, there are plenty of images around the, the internet and you don't know what images are formatted with zero track and what images aren't. It is a little bit tricky to write a, an image because you don't know how this image was dumped from the original floppy disk. So let's imagine the best possible scenario where uh, the image we are going to write on the floppy disk is written correctly. So it's written from track one onwards, uh, leaving the track zero alone. So the first thing we, we need to do is formatting a disk drive. So I'm gonna insert a floppy disk into the drive one and then I'm going to format the drive one. I'm gonna press yes and then the formatting start. The formatting complete, so this is a blank disk for an Olivetti M20. Then we can move to our MS-DOS compatible computer, whatever. This is a, my floppy machine, uh, it is a 386. I have installed a compact flash instead of, a, of an hard drive and I, I copied over the, the compact flash the files for the M20. So if we go to image right, this the directory, uh, we can see those with the IMG extension are the files for the M20, and uh, WRM20 is the actual program to write those images. So I'm going to insert that into my uh, 360k drive and then, so this is the syntax, uh, the name of the program uh, followed by the address of the drive and then the image to write on. If I am going to, to add zero, 
at the end of the line, it will attempt to format the track 0 into the FM encoding. But since the controller of this computer isn't able to do that, I'm not gonna do that. I actually tried to use the other controller on this computer, but it causes uh, some sort of strange things and the MS-DOS can't boot from the CF. So uh, yes, it will be that. So without the zero, you can see this program is very minimal. Uh, those this failure. Uh, this disk is bad, apparently. So let's try another disk. Um, okay, so this disk is proceeding. Okay, file successfully transferred to M20 disk. So this uh, file here is uh, actually the operating system. This is PCOS 4.1. And let's try if that disk is working on my M20. And here we go, here we go, that's the PC OS 4.1 is uh, loaded from the drive zero, which is where I put the disk and I disconnected the hard drive emulator and that's working, sweet! That's how you uh, do floppy disk for the uh, M20. Now, uh, as I said, there are some images that are mirrored incorrectly with the track zero dumped from a controller which isn't able to write track zero so in that case you need to exclude the track zero to be written onto the uh, actual disk if you're using the utility from dave dunfield you can actually select what tracks are going to be written on the disk and so you will exclude the track zero to be written on the disk. It's convenient to format it on an Olivia TN20 before. And yeah, I, I know it is impossible if you have the, the, the hard disk emulator as I have right there. And yeah, and that's, that's the real problem with this machine. Um, but hey, I was fortunate Piero gave me that wonderful <laughs> hard disk emulator and yeah, uh, that's it. So what's the moral of this story? Back then in 1982, this computer would cost you around 6,850,000 lire, which was the old Italian currency. In today's money, they are 14,274 euros or about $17,000. In 1981, an IBM PC would cost you around $1,565 or about $4,743 in today's money. Ultimately, I think that would have been the best solution, yet in hindsight. And that reflects the Olivetti thoughts about the M20, which has been on the market only for three years. Olivetti, in fact, in 1983 came out with the fully compatible MS-DOS M24, which was an extraordinary success, be cloned even by the AT&T, a popular USA computer manufacturer. The M20 was the first real attempt from Olivetti to produce an own computer excluding, of course, the evenly important ancestors such as the P6066 and the first personal, the P101. And it is awesome! I love the feel of this computer, it screams early 80s from everywhere. It is actually pretty solid and reliable. Usually it is difficult to find a totally dead non-working system for what I've seen. And the design, ah, speaking of delivery, it was designed by Ettore Zossas, an exponent of the radical design, an important and very influent architect who designed even the M24 and other tripe riders from Olivetti, such as the iconic Valentine. 
The hardware was spot on, 128 kilobytes of RAM, expandable up to 512 and a 16-bit Zilog Z8001 made this machine very competitive in, in terms of performance. The real problem was PCOS, the basic support was mandatory and frankly it is what saved the computer. So ultimately an underrated piece of technology, too ahead for its time and yet out of place. And I love it for that. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other sneaky peeky into old technology on this channel. If you would like to, I appreciate your subscription. Thanks for watching until the end and see ya next time.